Greetings and welcome to Oak Knoll's online ministry. My name is Pastor Jay Rudy, and I thank you on behalf of my colleagues and our leadership for joining us for today's worship. Today, our gospel text comes from St. Luke, from the 24th chapter, beginning with the 13th verse. Now on that same day, two of them were going to a village called Emmaus, about seven miles from Jerusalem, and talking with each other about all these things that had happened. While they were talking and discussing, Jesus himself came near and went with them, but their eyes were kept from recognizing him. And he said to them, What are you discussing with each other while you walk along? They stood still, looking sad. Then one of them, whose name was Cleopas, answered him, Are you the only stranger in Jerusalem who does not know the things that have taken place there in these days? He asked them, What things? They replied, The things about Jesus of Nazareth, who is a prophet mighty in deed and word before God and all the people, and how our chief priests and leaders handed him over to be condemned to death and crucified him. But we had hoped that he was the one to redeem Israel. Yes, and besides all this, it is now the third day since these things took place. Moreover, some women of our group astounded us. They were at the tomb early this morning, and when they did not find his body there, they came back and told us that they had indeed seen a vision of angels who said that he was alive. Some of those who were with us went to the tomb and found it just as the women had said, but they did not see him. Then he said to them, Oh, how foolish you are, and how slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have declared. Was it not necessary that the Messiah should suffer these things and then enter into his glory? Then beginning with Moses and all the prophets, Jesus interpreted to them the things about himself in all the scriptures. As they came near the village to which they were going, he walked ahead as if he were going on. But they urged him strongly, saying, Stay with us, because it is almost evening, and the day is almost over. So he went in to stay with them. When he was at table with them, he took bread, blessed and broke it, and gave it to them. Then their eyes were opened, and they recognized him, and he vanished from their sight. They said to each other, Were not our hearts burning within us while he was talking to us on the road, while he was opening the scriptures to us? This is the gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Grace to you and peace from God our Creator and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. Amen. When I drive... I like to know the directions ahead of time if it's a place I haven't been to before. When I'm with my family, I can be quite irritating to my co-pilot, who is often my wife, if we're going go to go to a place that's new, and if she isn't giving me directions ahead of time. I can be quite persistent. Where to now? Where do I need to turn? So on and so forth. I suspect that knowing where I'm going gives me a feeling of control and security that puts me at ease and lowers my anxiety about getting lost or off track. Similarly, when I exercise, I most often have planned routes already laid out in my head so I know how many miles I'm going to run and how long it will take me to complete my workout. I guess I find comfort in knowing what is ahead of me and where I am going. As, a, as I broaden my vision to look at my whole life, I think the same is true about all areas of my existence. While I'm never able to predict the road before me with 100% certainty, much of my life has a level of commonality or specificity that I can depend on. Well, the past five weeks have changed that for me and for you too. The roads and plans that we make and have counted on or assumed would lead us into the next day or the next week or the next month, those roads are gone. Each new day comes and the road still looks undefined, like an asphalt road that ends in a field at the outskirts of town. The road to Emmaus story from Luke 24, which I just shared with you, is one of my favorites in all of Scripture. In this text, two disciples leave Jerusalem and walk toward a town called Emmaus. We don't know for sure why they, they left Jerusalem. Perhaps they left because it wasn't safe for them 
because they were followers of Jesus. And it was an unfriendly area for them to be in in Jerusalem. There are many people who were after them. Or perhaps they left because their future was over. The road that they had traveled with Jesus ended with his death on the cross on Good Friday. The movement, the following that Jesus had created, it was done, it was over. There was nothing left for them to accomplish in Jerusalem. So those two disciples left and embarked on a, to a place called Emmaus. Now a part of this story stands out uh, for me in a brand new way today. I'd never paid attention to the fact that no one can say for sure where Emmaus is as a historical place. This speaks to me on this April 25th, the year 2020, because I too feel like I'm on a road, walking toward a destination that is undefined, toward a future that seems uncertain. And I feel too that I am also walking toward a future that is not going to be easy, seamless, or without hazards. Could those two disciples be you and me today? You and I are walking away from what we thought was a future with hope and promise, a Jerusalem of our own, a society that, while not perfect, had predictability for the most part. We believed we had a future that was laid out before us to walk and travel with ease that had clearly defined directions and a destination. But now, like those two disciples walking toward Emmaus, you and I look to the future and see uncertainty, unsure what our life will look like for many months or perhaps years. I find this undefined road hard to travel right now. I don't even want to think too far ahead. Remember, I'm the kind of person that likes to know directions ahead of time. Just ask my wife. I'm the guy who works out knowing my route, how far I'll run, how many calories I'm, I have as a goal to burn, and how much time it will take me to do so. I like knowing that my kids can go to their school, that I can gather with my friends whenever I want, that I can go to the movies even, or take a vacation and not have to cancel it. While I took these things for granted in the past, I now grieve their loss. And I too grieve that it is undefined when and what the future will look like for us. I don't like this uncertainty. The road for us as a faith community seems uncertain too. How long will it be before we can meet together in this beautiful sanctuary? And when we are able to meet, how many of us can gather together? Will it be 20 people, 50 people, or 100 people? What kind of precautions are we going to have to have? in place. And how many of you will decide that you won't be coming back to this sanctuary until there is a vaccine when you have immunity? That could be a year or even longer from now. The road for us as a society and as a church is uncertain and it is undefined in its length. So we walk like those two disciples into an unknown future to a place called Emmaus. And what kind of destination is Emmaus anyway? I don't think it's going to look like Jerusalem, if Jerusalem represents what life looked like before the pandemic. There is and will continue to evolve a new normal as we arrive at a destination that looks different from anywhere we've been before. We've already been changed by this road trip, and we will continue to experience change as we try and figure out what road to take to the future. There's another poignant part of this story that speaks to our time, and it is the fact that Jesus is anonymous to the disciples as they begin their walk toward Emmaus. They don't recognize him. Even though they had followed Jesus during his ministry, heard him speak, saw him perform acts of grace, healing, and new life. They didn't know that, that the person next to them was Jesus. Even though he joined them on their journey and walked at their side each and every step, they didn't recognize him at first. They didn't know. 
Strangely, today, Jesus' anonymity in this story gives me hope, great hope. When we go to the grocery store and take a walk outside, people have masks that cover their nose and their mouth. If you were to shop next to someone you knew, you may not recognize them because of their mask. And yet behind the mask, they continue to be someone you know. Those two disciples didn't recognize Jesus because of the mask of their expectations. The mask of their expectations wouldn't allow them to see who he truly was. They thought the defeat of Good Friday was final. They had seen Jesus cruelly killed on the cross. It was over. He was gone. And their future was undefined. They didn't have one. How could they see a future when Jesus was dead and buried? Good Friday was a mask that kept them from seeing Jesus at their side as he walked with them. Like I said, the disciples' inability to see and to recognize Jesus next to them gives me hope. Because like them, I struggle right now to recognize that Jesus is at my side today. Perhaps you can relate. Perhaps you might be struggling to recognize Jesus because your life has been upturned. Perhaps you've lost a job or seen your income reduced. Perhaps you're struggling with the new reality that the society that we thought was never going to be fractured or stressed to the point that it is today would ever be part of our experience. I cannot tell you in all honesty what the future holds, what the road we travel will look like tomorrow or the next day. But I can tell you this because it is Jesus' promise to us. Like he did with those two disciples, Jesus meets you on the road you walk, and he listens to your story with all its heartaches, pain, sorrow, and loss. He listens, and then he tells you, I love you. I care for you. You are my beloved. I will never leave you. You are mine. He tells us that though we cannot see the destination ahead of us, that it is a place of life, not death, that it is a place of joy, not sorrow. He walks by our side right now, and he leads us as we walk in this Good Friday pandemic time. And he promises us that one day we will reach a future place a place called Easter, where new life reigns. While you and I may not know for sure the path to this promised future, or how long it will take us, what is important, what is most important right now is knowing that we do not walk alone, and that Jesus is the one who walks with us each and every step of the way. He is the source of our hope, the source of our strength, and he promises us a future of life. Amen. I invite you to join me in a prayer time. I will offer a, a, a couple prayers, and after each prayer I will say, Lord, in your mercy, and if you would respond, hear our prayer. Let us pray separated in our residences, but united by God's promise of restoration. We pray for the church, the earth, the world, and all who are in need. Again, after each prayer petition, I will say, Lord, in your mercy, and you may respond to our prayer. Come to us, Lord. Come to us, people who are so burdened by heartache. Give us faith to know your loving presence among us. Open the scriptures to us and nourish us with the bread of your word. Open our eyes to see your presence by our side and lead us forward in hope toward the path of new life. 
Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, come to all who suffer from the coronavirus. Comfort those who mourn. Heal the sick. Sustain medical workers. Empower researchers who are seeking a vaccine. Stay with us and accompany all those who are isolated or afraid. Give to those with prior ailments and chronic disease their necessary medical care. And today we especially lift up those from our community who long for your healing presence, for Isla in hospice care, and for the family of Judy who mourn her death. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Walk with us on our roadways, Lord, whether marked with sorrow or with joy, and receive our prayers, whether sad laments or fervent praise. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I want to thank you for joining us for worship today. And I leave you with these words. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen and thanks be to God.